Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, we're back in Austin, Texas at Texas Traditions, visiting with legendary bootmaker Lee Miller. I couldn't be any more excited to be here because after several years, Lee is finally working on making my boots. Now, many of you have seen our measurements video we filmed with Lee Miller back in September 2017, and finally, we're working on my boots. So join me as Lee invites us inside his workshop to see firsthand the quality, craftsmanship, and tradition behind bespoke boot making. Lee. Hey, Kirby. Oh, so nice to see yeah, you. Yeah, wonderful to see you. Thanks yeah. for coming, yeah. and we're going to look at your boots. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so excited to be here. Well, they're getting really close. And I've been uh, it's a long anticipated moment. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Kirby, um, I'd like you to see your boots so far. And uh, I can't wait. This is. Um, this is the design we talked about. Wow. Look at this. I have to say, Lee, it's pretty exciting. I'm really honored to have you making a pair of boots for me. Well, we're, we're, we're really happy doing it for you, Kirby. This is smooth ostrich. And then we've got a black Italian kangaroo top. And then we've got this tulip motif mm -hmm. that you selected. And there's your initials. Yeah. And then we've got a little bit of a secret thing on the back. A little Texas. Yeah. Uh, Texas State, yeah, this is beautiful. So, and we decided this is the folded tulip. So this is kind of your evolution of Charlie's pinched rose. Yes, that's that's really an interesting um, observation. So Charlie was famous for the pinched rose, and the tulip design is really more uh, something I'm known for. Mm -hmm. So we merged the two, yeah, and now we've got a three-dimensional pinched tulip. Yeah, um, and this particular technique, I mean, the the pinched rose and uh, the tulip. I mean, it's a real kind of trade secret of yours. It's, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's really unique uh, and kind of iconic uh, to Lee Miller. Yeah. Well, Charlie did it for the first time in mm -hmm. 1939, and then um, you know he started. He became known for it, mm -hmm. and people copied it, uh, but they never really knew how he did it. Mm -hmm. And so he showed me how to do it, and um, and so we we've, we've got his own method incorporated onto this. Yeah. So it's kind of like the secret formula for Coca-Cola. You know, it's like you <laughs> yeah. and one other person know yeah. how to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. And yeah, that was one thing he promised me. He said, please, Lee, you know, you can show them anything, but this is something I don't want you to show them. So are you still the only one that does the Well, no, Charlotte and I, because okay. we work together, yeah. she has to know it. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's not anything that you would show anybody who doesn't really do the work, work in the shop. Yeah. 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 Well, that's exciting. I mean, that's one of the things that we discussed whenever we were kind of designing this boot is, you know, I really wanted this to be, um, you know, iconic to you and a real right. manifestation of kind of your legacy as a boot maker. And so that's kind of one of the reasons why I really leaned it towards the tulip versus the Texas rose. Yeah. Is that this is, you know, really something that you helped create. You know, certainly it is an evolution of your work with Charlie Dunn. Absolutely. Uh, which is yeah. a very important part of Texas traditions. Uh, but this is, um, you know, very much unique to Lee Miller. Yeah. Well, so, t so today what we're going to do is uh, take these boots th um, and we're going to go ahead and add a, a leather toe box. Okay. And then the boots will be continually every day. I'll be working on them till they're on your feet. Yeah. Well, one of the exciting things about this is we've really seen this entire process from the beginning. Right, so we had the video of you taking my measurements. That mm -hmm. was back in, I think, what, September 2017? Exactly. Right, yes, and yeah. then we came back and we had an opportunity to visit about you setting up the last, mm -hmm. right, with the measurements. Right. And then here we are actually getting to see you kind of finish the boots off. Right, and so the beginning was this, when I measured your feet. And so after measuring your feet, I spent a couple of days making the last. And then from the last, I'll go ahead and I'll make the paper patterns. And then these are the paper patterns. These okay. are the master patterns. So are these duplicates or this is? Well, this is the original. Okay. And then we made a cutting pattern, okay. which we actually used to cut out everything. And mm -hmm. the cutting pattern is now gone. Yeah. So this is the original and I'll always have this. Okay, but this is the front and then that's the yeah, back. Yeah, that's the front and the back, yeah. yeah. So this is just like that. Yeah. So it, was all, it all started with measuring your mm -hmm. feet then making the last, then designing the tops, 
then cutting everything out till we get to this point. Yeah. One of the things that I think is so unique about Western boot making is, I mean, not only is it really um, probably one of the only uh, quintessentially and uniquely American kind of, uh, you know, traditions and, and shoemaking or boot making that still is uh, going on today like it was a long time ago. I mean, it's still very active, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, absolutely. you know, just the design work that goes into, you know, the leg or the tops of the boots uh, again, is so uniquely unique to Western boot making. Yeah, it gives. So the boot maker, their job is to fit your feet and make sure you can get the boots on and mm -hmm. take them off. But also, it, we have a big canvas now that we can go ahead and put different things on. Whether it's a plain boot or a fancy boot, it's still you have to make sure they fit. Mm -hmm. um, and so that doesn't change. But what does change is the top design. It can be fancy stitching, it can be inlay. Um, and, uh, and so as a bootmaker, that's the artistic part. Yeah. Um, that's where we get to go ahead and look at the past and try and come up with a pattern. Um, everything means something to a customer. And so the customer gets to go ahead and to say, this is, these are the colors I want, this is the design. Uh, sometimes they do leave it up to you mm -hmm. to go ahead and to come up with whatever yeah. you decide. But it's really, it's between the customer and the bootmaker coming up with this that's where we work together tightly. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, this is the fun part, yeah. the artistry. Well, it's really amazing. I mean, you think about bespoke being unique to the person for whom it's being made. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really a partnership between the maker, right, and their artistry, right. you know, kind of being manifested through that. Uh, and it's not just craftsmanship, it's artistry too, as we kind of see, and see here. Uh, but then, you know, again, that partnership with the client to kind of uh, manifest what's unique or interesting to them. And this, I mean, you compare it to, you know, kind of Western English bespoke shoemaking, mm -hmm. which is such a beautiful manifestation of that art. I mean, this really kind of takes it to the next level, uh, which just with the, like what you said, the canvas that you have is so large. Yeah. And it, I mean, I personally enjoy, I mean, I, I enjoy measuring people's feet and setting up the last. I enjoy that whole process, um, but I also enjoy the artistry yeah. because it gives you a chance to do something that, you know, that you know, the customer will find very pretty. Yeah. Um, and so in this instance, this is a tulip design, mm -hmm. which has been used probably since the 1900s wow. in different ways. And mm -hmm. what we've done is we've gone ahead and made it very unique. Yeah. How do you visualize this shape? Because mm -hmm. you're not making a foot-shaped shoe, right? No, it's... You're it's, making a beautiful shoe that fits the foot. It's an interpretation. Yeah. yeah. So we're using fitting techniques. So this is one of them. You'll notice this. It's beautiful. Kind of I mean, your foot doesn't have that, yeah. you know, but what we've done is I've gone ahead and I've taken the measurements and I've, I've, I've moved them around. So yes, the four part is you, mm -hmm. but then once we get it from back through to the heel, that's, that's your foot rearranged. Rearranged. And the reason we're doing it is for fitting techniques. Mm -hmm. So we want you to get the boot on, but then yeah. once the boot is on, we want it to fit. Yeah. So we have to. So it's not like I took a cast of your foot yeah. and made the boot on it, because if I did, uh, you really you wouldn't be able to get it on. Yeah. It would fit, kind of, sort of, but you wouldn't be able to get it on. Mm -hmm. So we have to distribute the the measurements. Yeah. Nor I mean, whenever the foot flexes, I mean, would it become uncomfortable? I mean, if it's um, if it's not fit correctly. Well, it's got, it, uh, obviously the, it's got to be fit correctly. Yeah. yeah but. Um, um, your foot will flex in the fore part, yeah. and that's the part um, we've made it look elegant, but uh, that's the part where we've stayed most true to your foot. Yeah. But everything, th everything from the ball backwards, we've monkeyed with it. Okay. And that's a good word. Yeah. To, to <laughs> and at what point are you beginning to visualize the the shape of the last itself? Well, I mean, when I was lasting it, which was yesterday, mm -hmm. that's. Um, um, that's when I could really start to see, see it. everything happening. But I mean, I'm looking at it, Kirby, and I'm looking at it like this, mm -hmm. to where the toe is right at me, and I'm just looking at it. I'm looking at it this way. I'm looking at it this. Way. I mean, I'm examining it from all aspects. But it's got a beautiful sculpture to it. That's so. It's the silhouette, which would be the side profile, mm -hmm. but it's also the sculptural aspect of it, yeah. and that, and I can see it mm -hmm. um, in the last. And now I can see it in the boot. Yeah. And if it's done right, which that's kind of like, the, as you said, the secret sauce. Yeah, the magic. Yeah, that if it's done right, the boot will feel like nothing you've ever had on your feet before. 
Um, and that's, that's the cool part. That's the part that I so uh, love to do because it's so individual to mm -hmm. me yeah. um, that, um, that that's, where, that's where it really comes out. Yeah. It's a beautiful shape. Talk, talk us through some of the other details. I mean, since we're kind of holding this here, um, I mean, there, again, is so much that's going in to just the overall aesthetic and right. beauty of this. So we'll, we'll set the table by just talking about the material. So this is ostrich, it's smooth ostrich. And the ostrich came from South Africa. So it was raised, it was ranch raised. Mm -hmm. So it's not a wild bird. Um, so you chose smooth. And so there's a few quill bumps on it, but not very many. And this is the top of the leg? Or? Well, this is actually not the leg, leg itself. Okay. As we move away from the backbone, mm -hmm. the feathers stop and the skin becomes smooth. smooth. Okay. And then the leg has a different texture altogether, mm -hmm. okay. which we, there's no leg on this at all. Okay. So this is, uh, some people will call this ostrich belly. Okay. It's not really belly, but. It's got a beautiful texture to it. Yeah, it's, it, it's very, very strong, very, very soft, and very, very, uh, dur um, uh, it's gonna wear comfortably, but it'll wear very well. Mm -hmm. So these boots will last 20 years. Yeah. Um, and that's the beauty of the ostrich skin itself. Okay. So on the tops, we've got Italian kangaroo. And when I say Italian kangaroo, they've taken the raw kangaroo hide mm -hmm. from Australia, and, the, and it was a, um, a wild kangaroo. Okay. And so they've sent it to uh, Italy, and the Italians are master tanners. Mm -hmm. And so they, they do such a beautiful job in tanning it. So we've got South African ostrich, Italian kangaroo that came from uh, uh, Australia. Gotcha. And then the initials, which you can see here, this is a Charlie Dunn font. And Charlie would weave the initials together so they hang on each other. So I've taken your initials and I've woven them together. And this is a bone kangaroo. Mm -hmm. And then, the, then we get to the tulip design. And the tulip design goes back to the early 1900s. It was never like this. Um, it, but uh, what we've done is we've taken the tulip design and we've kind of moved it around and then we've also gave, given it some, uh, we've folded it, we've pinched it. And so that's what makes it unique is the fact that this tulip design is now something that's, we, we've never really done this before. Mm -hmm. We've done it before as a collar, but never as an all over design. Yeah. And then at the back, we've got a little state of Texas. Yeah. And nice touch. Yeah. We've used blue thread to go ahead and to do all the assembly, mm -hmm. which really gives it an electric look. Yeah. It really pops. Mm -hmm. The beading that we've got up top is bone kangaroo, which we made. And the side beading, which we made, is black kangaroo. And these pull straps have a little tiny strip of ostrich on them okay. with, with what we call a decorative chain stitch. Okay. So after we did the, you know, the last was set up, then we made the paper patterns. Then we had to make the tops. The tops took about 10 days to do. Wow. And then after that, then they're simply wet and stretched onto the last. And mm -hmm. all of these nails are temporary. Mm -hmm. So this is all gonna be hand sewn. The shank will be hand sewn. The four part will be welted, mm -hmm. inseamed. But today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip back the vamp and put in the leather toe box. Okay. Then once it's dry, I'll shape it then I'll flip it back around again, and then we'll start hand sewing. Yeah. And one of the things we wanted was, or that I wanted was a, a very um, conservative aesthetic, right, which is the reason we went for the black, mm -hmm. you know, kind of ostrich and kangaroo. Right. But what I like about these two materials is you don't see these in English shoes. I mean, the ostrich and the kangaroo are very kind of quintessentially Western um, boot making materials. I mean, you don't see it used really anywhere else. That's interesting. Um, so ostrich was introduced into the U.S. in the 50s. Okay. And the very first boot makers that used it thought it was crazy. But then it kind of, they started really getting into it. They yeah. realized this is a very unusual leather. Kangaroo has been used in boot making since the 1930s. Okay. So it's much older. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting because kangaroo and ostrich have similar characteristics in terms of feel mm -hmm. and in terms of durability. This is extremely durable. Um, and so uh, even though it's thin, it's very tough. Yeah. So uh, the, yeah, when your pant legs are down, mm -hmm. people will only see the foot portion. Yeah. But when you want people to see the tops, you can yeah. just pull your pant legs Absolutely. up. And, uh, and that was, I think, our first 
design was uh, almost too subdued, and I kind of thought about it a little bit. Yeah. I think it was maybe at your recommendation to liven it up a little well, bit. Well, we've, we've definitely, um, yeah, we've get, definitely, definitely done that. Li yeah. livened it up. Um, it, it, but it, it really is interesting because when you're sitting down in a, in a chair, your pant legs will ride up. Mm -hmm. People will start to go and they'll see, oh my goodness, there's yeah. all this color. What is that? that you know, yeah. Can you please show us yeah. the rest of your boot? And there's an entire story here. I know. So talk to me a little bit about just the, the tradition of the tulips. Because this is, I mean, an uh, evolution of the Texas rose that mm -hmm. Charlie was famous for or different? It's interesting. The, the tulip design goes back to the earliest cowboy boots where it was generally just stitched. Okay. Then once uh, the, the kind of like the Hollywood cowboy started coming into effect in the 1910, 1920s in the silent movies, they started making the, the, the tulip design more colorful. Mm -hmm. And so you would see the tulip design in different shapes, not like this, but similar in different shapes. And what we did with, you know, for you, is we took the idea of Charlie Dunn's pinched rose, mm -hmm. and we took the tulip design and we pinched it also. Yeah. So it's got some. It's it, it has the, the the symbolism of the early tulip designs that were yeah. done, um, but it, now it's been kind of enhanced with the pinched yeah. aspect of it. So it gives it a kind of a 3D effect. Yeah, and it's one of those threads that. Uh, really just kind of connect the history of Western boot making, which yeah. is so rich with tradition. I mean, it, it, it is amazing. When you literally look at photographs from the 1880s, you will see a tulip design. And you, you wonder, where did that even come from? Well, we know where it came from. It came from Europe. Mm -hmm. But they started incorporating uh, that kind of artwork into cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. So so it, it really it is interesting to see how things become what they yeah. become. You're saying that, you know, the tul the folded tulip is quite unique. Mm -hmm. So have you done this before, or is this the first time it's been done to this extent, or tell me? We can refer to it as folded or, or, or pinched. Mm -hmm. Both are, are, okay. are correct use of the words. The first customer we had asked us to do uh, a, a pinched tulip design, much like Charlie Dunn's pinched roses, okay. and to do it along the top, mm -hmm. which you could call a, a border. We've never done it this way, Kirby. Yeah. So in this instance, we took that same pinch tulip design, and we went back and we took the original tulips that were done historically mm -hmm. since 1880. We've taken it and we've kind of, we've done the pinch tulip. Yeah. So you can see it's different pieces of leather that have all been folded mm -hmm. and pinched to create a 3D effect. This, you could call this a wreath, and then these are the leaves. Mm -hmm. There's a leaf there. So symbolically, it's all connected to what was done in 1880. Yeah. The top is pretty much uniquely me. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's the kind of thing where when you start looking at old vintage stuff, mm -hmm. you start kind of going, oh, that's a good idea, but I can go ahead and do this to it. Yeah. And that's how I created this collar. It's part of the signature of a bootmaker, and this yeah. is part of your signature. I started doing this back in, in, in 1985. And what's unique about the design of the collar? It's, it? it's just, it's, it's rooted in vintage, mm -hmm. but it's just something that no one has had ever done. And is done. that the inlay design with this, the collar? Normally it would just be sewn? Well, normally this entire design would have been sewn. Stitched, yeah. Um, but this, this is kind of a modified chain stitch, okay. which I call a western chain stitch. Mm -hmm. Uh, Charlie Dunn referred to it as simply a chain stitch, but he didn't do this. This is me. Yeah. So we've got um, we've got elements of 1880. We've got elements taken from other aspects to create the border, and it all just kind of gels. And then we've put a little tiny Texas yeah. in the back. Yeah. What about this right here? I mean, the heel kind of comes up. And yeah. So so this this is a fleur mm -hmm. tongue pattern. And I really love the Fleur tongue pattern. Uh, it's my favorite. Okay. I mean, the tongue pattern is, every bootmaker has their own signature tongue pattern. Mm -hmm. This is not a signature tongue pattern. This is more uh, an homage to the past. Okay. And so the Fleur design, which I love, is in the back and in the front. Mm -hmm. And uh, on all my boots that I personally wear, I wear this too. Yeah. Because to me it's got... It really is. It screams vintage. Yeah, and I just love old stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that again is 
kind of that thread of history that connects mm -hmm. this yeah. tradition of boot making. And that's the fun that's the fun part is because you can, you know, you can go ahead and you can focus on fitting, you can fo focus on the artistry, but when you tie it all together with some historical yeah. aspect, um, that's really that's the zenith. That's yeah, the, it's the magic. You know? That was the archaeologist in me. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's absolutely. I mean, again, there's just so much, so many different elements in this, right? I mean, the craftsmanship mm -hmm. of traditional Western boot making. Yeah. And, you know, the craftsmanship behind, you know, fitting, uh, and you know, kind of technically, uh, uh, you know, making a, a boot that fits well. Uh, one of the things that made Charlie so well known and so famous was the marriage behind fitting. Right, mm -hmm. he was known as such an excellent mm -hmm. fitter. Correct. But then also the artistry behind the ornamentation of the boot itself. That's really true. I mean, he was a great artist. So he was—he studied the foot. He was a great fitter, and then he was a really good artist. And yeah. uh, so that's something that I really, when I first met him, I wanted to be an artist mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Um, of course, I didn't know how to fit feet, and he helped me learn. Yeah. But he also showed, he kind of gave me a peek into the world of the artistry of the boot. Yeah. And so uh, it's, it really is a challenge, Kirby, to take whatever he taught me and keep moving forward yeah. with it. Um, and so, you know, when I do something, it's always in the spirit of what he taught yeah. me. Yeah, but I mean, really kind of taking it forward uh, in such an amazing way. Well, right? thank you. As this boot yeah. is, is such a testament to. Uh, I'm so excited. Of course, we've got my initials right here yeah. and the, kind of the bone. Yeah. Right. This is kangaroo also, or is this calf skin? Uh, this, I believe, is kangaroo. Okay. And so this is, this in interestingly enough, this is a Charlie Dunn style initial. Really? Okay. So he came up with his own font, mm -hmm. which that's what this is. Really? Okay. And then he would also weave them together, which you can see I've done. Yeah. So he taught me how to do that. Yeah. Uh, when you look at my early work, it's nothing like this. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> in the early days, uh, and we're talking a long time ago, it was uh, not very well done. Well, but but I under Charlie's imagine. guidance, yeah. it was that continually refining it till we get to what we have today. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I love about craftsmanship is that it has to be practiced, mm -hmm. right? And so you have yeah. someone like yourself that has been doing this for such a long time. Yeah. Uh, a, a true master of the craft itself, you know, there's a different manifestation and approach and just result that you can only get having after having done it for so long. Yeah, this is maybe 5,000. <laughs> yeah, Crazy. so. Absolutely amazing. So maybe one was yeah, terrible. Ter yeah, uh, so <laughs> you 5, should 000? see my first video. <laughs> Actually, you wouldn't see it because we totally threw oh it away. <laughs> well, um, but, but I really love doing this. Yeah. You know, it, to me, it's, um, you know, uh, it's fun. Yeah. You get to fit people's feet. Yeah. You know, you make them walk comfortably, which mm -hmm. is very important. But also, it's tradition. Yeah. And this is a Texas tradition. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where the name came from. Exactly. Yeah. Quality craftsmanship and tradition at its finest. Well, uh, of course, it's everything I'm passionate about. Yeah. Thank you, Kirby. Um, so, talk to me a little bit about what's next. Um, well, so so what I'm going to be doing now um, is I'm going to be pulling back the vamps okay. and exposing the lining, and then I'm going to be putting in the leather toe box. Okay. And that's going to dry overnight. Okay. And then the next day, I'm going to go ahead and shape it. To get the you know to get to the toe shape that you mm -hmm. want, and then I'm going to pull it back around, and then I'll start hand sewing. Okay. So really, and the hand sewing is the bottom work. Oh yeah, yeah. and and so uh, the, the most difficult part is the last, the the patterns and the tops. Yeah. Then everything from there is not the same level of difficulty. Okay. It just it's more um, mechanical. Yeah, and this bottom part is going to be really interesting to see how much. Uh, similarity there is between kind of Western boot making <laughs> yeah. uh, and English boot making. Yeah. I'm so excited it, it, to see this. Yeah, we, we, um, yeah so th some of the things that we're going to be doing go back to the Roman days. Um, and so, uh, you know, unbeknownst to me, yeah. that is how old it is. Wow. But um, What an, and just an amazing tradition. Yeah, but the, the main thing is uh, they've got to fit and they've got to be well made. Yeah. And so that's, that, that part of it, um, is uh, what's yeah. coming up. Well, exciting. Well, thank you so much for having us uh, into the workshop for a few days no. and uh, you know, really showing us um, the work that goes uh, into such an amazing pair of boots. Thanks, Kirby. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, a long time in coming yeah. and um, we'll have them on your feet soon. I can't wait. I, this is like Christmas. <laughs>
But if I give myself a little bit extra at the toe, not at the sides, not at the top, not at the back, just at the front, then it allows me to really get a nice crisp toe. And once again, that came from that shoemaker from Munich, Germany. He said, this is the way that we did it in Munich. And so I tried it, and boy, it made everything so much easier. Once you wear a handmade boot, you'll never buy a store-bought boot again.